Oneness isn't a thought. Heaven Letter Number 5026 August 29, 2014 Beloveds, I take care of everything. I love your very humanness. I deed everything to you. I bequeath you the very human beingness of you. I tell you how to live as a human being in a world you sublet for a time. I give everything to you, and you begin to grasp the outpouring of my heart. I will give you everything. I do give to you, the very human you, everything. I give you very human pointers on how to live. I lay my ideas before you. I am the gift I give you. And that's it. What more can I give you? I am love. I am givingness. And these are qualities you, your individual self, want to use single-mindedly, yet these are not qualities that can be kept in the mind, for they are not attributes. They are not add-ons. Givingness is inherent. It is inborn within you. Yes, thinking is a transition for you. You can think of oneness, yet thoughts are not oneness. Sometimes you really begin to think you have grasped oneness. Oneness may be grasped now and then, like a light bulb working one day and flickering the next, yet oneness is not something that the mind can really grasp and stay with. Oneness is ungraspable. Oneness, which is silence itself, and not at all the motion and commotion of the world, cannot be held. It can only be. And being, from which all comes, contains everything. It does not stay still. It does not move. It is immovable, yet you cannot knowingly reach it and keep it in mind. When you have conscious awareness of being, you have already stepped out of it, for the reality is that you are oneness, and oneness cannot be separated from itself. At present, when you have that glimpse which is so precious to you, your mind has relegated you outside of oneness, even as you cannot be outside oneness. It is like you have to be away from the ocean to see it. Immersed in the ocean, you are immersed. You have to go a distance in order to see the greatness of the ocean. The world had to look at itself from a further place in order to get beyond seeing the world as flat. From where you sit, you are not far enough away to notice the curve of planet Earth. It is a wonderful place to be in where you can see the Earth curving, yet this puts you at a distance even as you are to come nearer and nearer, and closer and closer. On earth, you dip deeply into the ocean, and you come out to dry off. And you dip again, and you come out again, even as you are ever immersed in the ocean and are nowhere else but in the ocean deep. Immersed in God, you will no longer notice any distance. No longer will there be a glimpse of otherness. In oneness, you cannot see from anywhere but oneness. Oneness and wholeness are the same. All and nothing are the same. Fullness and emptiness are the same. Emptiness is not barrenness. Emptiness is fullness. Nothingness is fullness. You may feel that you live in topsy-turvyville. This is true. In oneness, there are no boundaries. There is no up and down, upside down or right side up, far and wide any direction to take in order to jump up or jump down, or make any motion at all in plain daylight or darkness. In this state of consciousness, you are spinning, even as you don't notice it. What is there to notice? Oneness is. Wholeness is. It can be said that you are out of this world. The world does not really exist. What can exist when oneness is all? What can I give you but myself and, therefore, Yourself. Channeled by Gloria Wendroff. HeavenLetters.org.